Well, what have we got today? Oh my God, there's nothing here. <laughs> well, actually, in a very funny way, there is something here. There is exactly what you see around you. Yeah, the extension to my evil owl, he's up there above you and down here, of course, with his little helpers. Yeah, he's all around you. It's an extension to the original studio that I had from, well, a long time ago, 1995, we built the original studio and it had been there ever since. Well, one of the problems uh, that I encountered, I, I don't use it these days for, for any bands and things like that. I've been down all that and to be honest, after a while, about, it's probably about eight years ago, uh, yeah, or well, maybe a bit longer than that. Uh, yeah, probably a bit longer than that. You couldn't really get bands uh, coming in or any of that. It's all stopped, that has. So if you're a recording studio that does just that, well, good luck to you, unless you're doing nothing else and it's a 24 by 7 job and all the rest. Well, carry on. I didn't uh, build this studio uh, extension to uh, to do any of that although i could do all of that today if i wanted to i prefer to do other stuff like my own music and my friends music and different people i know that rather associates that i know rather than people i don't know anyway the video today is all about this extension this new part of the studio this is part one part two covers the building and assembly of the components in the studio, including the desk and all that sort of stuff. And part three will be actually a complete tour of the new studio as it is now, uh, which nobody has actually seen online yet, although you think you have. Uh, no, you haven't. And I'll be covering on part three, although we did cover in part two some of that uh, sort of stuff of how I did this or how I did that. In part three, as well as showing you the final thing, I'll be showing you some of the uh, some of the stuff that I did that wasn't shown on the original video or part two, should I say? This part one is all about bricks and mortar and building. So, if you don't want bricks and mortar and building, just you can either go down below for part two, which is an interesting one, or go to part three if it's there. It will be presently, but it takes time to do. And, and part three is probably the most interesting one. Although, having said that, if you are going down the route of either building an outdoor uh, studio, a smallish home one, or whether you're uh, extending a pro studio, uh, well, I guess the building side's all the same. Bricks are bricks and mortar's mortar, isn't it? You'll have the same problems I did. <laughs> you don't want to know. Now, the fact is that Building a studio or extending a studio can be, honestly, it can be a, a total nightmare. And I, I'm telling you from personal experience twice that it is a total nightmare. Uh, it really is. When I built the original studio back in 1995 uh, with some friends and uh, even band members, <laughs> indeed, uh, and some builders for the stuff we couldn't do, uh, well, things were very different then. And today, in uh, 2021, uh, you've got huge amounts of legislation and certifications and all the rest of it that, that comes with being in 2021, 2022. So if you think that, oh, I'll just knock one up and kick it out to the back, no, you know you won't. Uh -huh. And if you do, uh, they'll be around to visit you. <laughs> Who knows what will happen then? In England... Uh, I, don't, I can't speak about America, but in England, if you don't get the right permissions and the right certification, they'll come and knock it down <laughs> and then charge you for knocking it down. <laughs> it's a crazy place. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of this frivolousness. You know, it's it's a serious subject and uh, what I wanted to make this video about because there's more to it than you think. Now, lastly, before we actually get into the video... I don't know how long it will be. I've got loads and loads of photographs. I've got a little bit of video in the middle that was taken on a uh, cell phone. Uh, and that will probably be included somewhere. But the videos show it all. And you're going to get my comments as we go. So uh, it's a pretty good overall uh, view or opinion about 
how we end up and all that stuff. But the last thing I want to mention is, hey, are you a subscriber? Hey, if this is on the Evil Owl channel, Evil Owl Studios, I need subscribers. It's a new channel and I need to get it off the ground and really rocking and rolling a bit. And if you're on TonyMcKenzie.com, that's got currently near enough about 30,000 subscribers. But I, I always want more subscribers and I want people to do the thumbs up thing as well. Um, do the bell. Tick the bell. But when you do, when you do tick that bell, don't forget about uh, ticking all or choosing all. Because scarily, <laughs> honestly, scarily, you look at the figures. I've got these 30,000 subscribers and only 5% of them actually have the notifications turned on. Uh, they don't get to see videos sometimes for months. And it's the same in non-subscribers. 80% of the people that come to my channel are not subscribers. And they'll come back and look at another one and come back and look at another. Do you know what? They still don't subscribe. Why? Who knows? I don't know. So if you can do that to help the channel, hey, listen, really appreciate it. Not like some of these other guys that you see out there. You know. Anyway, let's get down to it. Okay, well, let's get down to it. I can't wait, can you? I've got some great pictures and uh, I know you'll, uh, anybody who's into this sort of thing and wanting to do this uh, should appreciate it. So here we go with the first picture on the, uh, on the computer. It will be on your screen, by the way. Okay, the, well, this first one, you can see, it, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they brought this little digger in. And they, they had another one at the side there for all the rubbish. And uh, it was a bit of a nightmare getting it there because I have a particularly long garden. I think it's about 280 feet long or something crazy like that. And uh, anyway, they, they got these in. And uh, that's your first picture. Yeah, notice the wall just in front of that statue. That it's on the left, but it isn't on the right. And that's because they knocked it down. <laughs> yeah, great. Moving along a bit, you can see that they're digging out the foundations there. And they've marked them out. And just on the right-hand side, if you look on the screen there, you can see the, the wall of the original studio. So this is where it's all going to go, and that's the size it's going to be, and they're working to plans that have been approved actually by uh, the local council. And that's a very important thing. You have to get proper plans, send them to the council, and they'll either approve them or they won't. Well, they approved mine anyway, and back in 1995, I've got a letter from the council telling me at that time I didn't need planning permission, but these days you do. But this one here gives you some idea of the sort of depths that they're going to go to and uh, that sort of thing. Let's just carry on forward. Okay, you can see they've dug out a trench. There's what's left of my wall on the left-hand side. <laughs> but they smashed apart, didn't care. And you can see how deep it's going. There's, there's a water-filled trench there. And one of the problems in our area uh, is that you've got this water table that's not really that low. And you can see when they dug that deep, it started coming into the thing. So you've got to look at stuff like that. Otherwise, you can end up in, uh, well, problems. Okay, they've got the uh, sides of the foundations dug out there on this one. And you, you can see very clearly that uh, they go down a good way. I mean, they get down, I, I don't know exactly how many feet, but it looks at least two or three feet deep to me and pretty wide as well. And uh, that's a, a requirement, part of, the, uh, part of the plans of the original building that we had drawn up. You can see the foundations are much wider than the old studio. So this new piece actually juts out because one of the problems we had in the old studio is it was never really wide enough. Uh, we just didn't make it any bigger at the time. That's just life. You can never go back and redo it. But there it is uh, in all its glory. Or I could say glory. <laughs> anyway, move on. Uh, there's the first shot with the, the concrete that had been sunk in there. And you, not in my words, they used a lot of it uh, to create the foundations that aren't really going to go anywhere if you haven't got foundations like that, uh, trust me, it won't be good in some years to come. And there's another shot. 
And that's from the other angle, uh, looking at the old studio on the right there, and uh, the digger and the rest. You can see that where the digger is, importantly, where I used to have grass, I now have nothing but concrete and cement. More about that later. Now, if you take a look at the next image, uh, this one coming up now, uh, you'll actually see the foundation bricks going into place. Uh, very important. You can see they did a pretty good job. Uh, far more straighter than anything I could design or build. Uh, so there you have it. And if I move across to the next image, you'll see that, uh, yeah, it came along very nicely. Or very good. Or good so far, right? Taking shape. And there's, I think, the last one on that. Uh, from a bit of a distance away. Now on this picture, you, you'll see that they've put this... Uh, it's like a protection against damp coming up through the floor. And it's essential, absolutely essential. It's also on the plans. And what the local councils do is they send an inspector along to come and have a look at what's going on on different times. So they'll, yeah, they'll agree with the builder when they're going to come. Now, I had to pay for that inspection. It cost, uh, here in uh, where I live, about £600, or about eight or $900 for them to keep coming back and having a look at what the builder did, just to make sure the builder did do what he should. And I, I think it's well worth the money. <laughs> yeah, the builder doesn't, doesn't move. When these guys come around, he, he makes sure he gets things right. And I think that's an important aspect. And this is once they've fitted the uh, actual concrete for the actual floor over the top of the plastic. You can see it there. That's a side view. And you can see that very clearly it's, uh, yeah, it's all good stuff. Now, as you could see uh, from the last shot, that they got the base in and they got the... Uh, the, th the plastic in there to stop the, the damp coming up through the floor and all that stuff. And it was time to move on uh, to stop building with bricks and that sort of thing. So as you can see in this shot, uh, they've got piles of bricks. The, the concrete set, the uh, plastic's there to stop the, uh, the damp coming through. And they're all ready to start building, which is in fact what they did actually do. You can see different views of the bricks all stacked up, ready to go. Yeah, there were a lot of bricks, <laughs> that's all I can say. And you'll notice now that we've now got other bricks, or some people call them cinder brick. And they've been stacked up, ready to be put inside the building, which is the inner core, if you will. That's how it's done in the UK. don't know how it's done in the States, but that's a good example. There they are. More of an overview again of the site. Doesn't look very big there. But when you're actually in it later, you'll realise that it is actually quite big. Okay, well, they moved on to starting to build the walls. And uh, things come along at a fair old rate once they start doing that. There are delays in this build, by the way, and when we get to them, I'll be telling you about them and why the delays are there and all sorts of things like that. So... All very interesting. On the screen now, you can see there's part build uh, of the wall. And I'm sure there'll be other images. Here we go. So you can see that the wall's being built up. The external wall. That's being done first. He was a very good bricklayer. I have to say that. And it's not one guy, it's a company. But he was a very good bricklayer. Now we moved on a bit further and you can see the walls have got a bit higher and they've built the internal structure as well. You can see that uh, it's coming along nicely. Let's move forward a bit. Yeah, from a side angle, you can see that the internal uh, cinder brick or breeze block, they sometimes call it as well, is in there in, inside now and uh, yeah, very good. Another shot. And this is a shot of the back wall, the back end of uh, the studio. Here's some more shots inside the studio. You can see them. Uh, pretty good uh, finish, really. If you look at this shot here, you can see that 
there's some of the uh, materials that they used uh, to put between walls and things like that. It's all very important at any time to keep the noise down absolutely as much as you can. But it's also important, uh, you know, to keep the place warm when it gets cold in England. It does get pretty cold. It's not Canada, though. <laughs> That's the old studio there. And as you can see, they've started to tear the roof off <laughs> and things like that. Now, some of you eagle-eyed guys might have noticed that I've got a little pond out there. And that pond in this area, it uh, every year has lots of frogs and lots of tadpoles. And they sort of live around the area because it's got this high water table, like I said. And here's one of the, uh, the local visitors. Yeah, here he is. He came wandering along onto my step and I just thought I'd grab the camera and take a shot of him. What a beautiful uh, frog it is too. Yeah, it'll probably turn into a prince one day. <laughs> or not. But there you are. There's the frog. Do bear in mind that everything that you're doing uh, upsets the nature. Yeah, the frogs. I kept the pond there simply because that's where they live. That's where they come every year. It's where they breed and where they make lots of baby tadpoles that turn into frogs. It's always a consideration when you're building anything. So do bear that in mind, won't you? You wouldn't want frogs like that guy you just saw on the screen over there. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't want him going anywhere. This next picture, this one here, is the, uh, the wood for the roof. It's a flat roof. This next image uh, shows you the other type of material that they use and it's all sort of about four inches thick or more and it's uh, insulation for the building. So is sound going to get out? Well, not really. It's insulated better than the old studio that we built because <laughs> we weren't really builders. Uh, but there it is. That's today's standard here in the UK. Well, there are other considerations as well. If you're building a studio from scratch, that's all well and good. That's fabulous. You'll have a great job. But if you're not building it from scratch and you've already got a building that's used as a studio, it's likely you'll have equipment in there. And part of the problem of making an extension to a studio is, listen, these builder types, <laughs> you can't comprehend what they're like. They're very good at putting bricks one on top of another. But they're not very good at anything else. And if you ask them, if you say to them, hey, listen, be careful with this, won't you? You might as well have gone in this side and come out this side because they don't have a clue. They honestly don't have a clue. And this next photo on the screen right now is one of the pictures that I, I sort of started to cover stuff up at the start of before they put the holes in the wall and stuff like that in the original studio and uh, yeah what a nightmare here's another picture of the same place now it all ended up having to be moved around and messed around with just to get that outside okay well we've moved on uh, with those pieces of wood I showed you earlier onto the roof and they finally started to get the roof together this image on the screen now you can see the girders they've put in place all oh, very nice. Well, they seem to work. <laughs> well, the roof hasn't caved in yet, has it? Who knows what'll happen, but uh, there it is. Have I got more shots of that? Yes, I have. Here's a few more shots of it. And uh, some of the things they did. Here's a shot inside where they're dropping all the cabling down as well. And that's another thing, the electrical cabling. But we'll come back to that a little bit later. You might be very surprised at the aggravation that that can cause. Honestly, you wouldn't believe me. Well, you will, because I'm going to show you. So there are the electrical drops all around after communication with the electrician. And that one in the middle that's about two foot from the top relates to uh, where I later fitted a rack for the new extension. OK, well, there are other problems. <laughs> But I've sort of touched on them, but you won't have got it. I'm going to tell you anyway. You can see that around the edge of the uh, new part of the studio, there's like a trench been dug. 
And the reason that trench is there is if you look at the, the, the wall itself on the studio, the new piece, you'll notice there's the sort of dark grey or black bricks and then there's the normal coloured brown bricks higher up. Well, those lower bricks are designed to be, uh, well, they don't let water in and they don't leak and things like that. So that trench uh, basically is there to keep the ground below where the top of the grey bricks are. In fact, it has to be a few inches below does the ground. So they uh, decided to build in a sort of, well, it's almost like a moat, isn't it? <laughs> and one of the problems, there it is, being dug around. And it's to keep the ground below those grey bricks. That's so essential. And if you don't do that, and you, you do let the ground go above the grey bricks, well, first of all, that guy that comes from the council will, uh, yeah, he'll stop you. But second of all, what you'll then have is damp inside the building. It's not a good idea at any time. Uh, it's absolutely essential. So that was the, the plan of what we did uh, at the time. Okay, well, we were moving along and then it sort of slowed down a bit. Well, why did it slow down? Well, it slowed down because they couldn't get the roofer there uh, instantly. Why they couldn't? Well, it wasn't managed properly on the building side of things. You know, you normally have a guy that's like a project manager. I don't know if you know this, but in England, uh, if you were building something like that, you'd have a project manager, or you could project manage it yourself. But hey, listen, I'm not a builder, so I farmed it back to them, and silly me, advice, don't do it yourself, don't let them do it, get a proper project manager, and he'll kick their arses when they get it wrong. Or is it asses? Could be donkeys. Anyway, whatever, that's what happens. So you can see that picture on the screen now uh, with the plastic over the top to stop the rain coming in while we wait for a builder. In any case, a little bit later, a week or so later, could have been a week, along came the roofer and the roofer did the roof. And as you can see on that picture there, you can see there's a dark bit and a light bit on the right hand side. Now we got into a bit of an argy bargy with this at one stage. And the argy bargy was, ah, your old roof, we can't put our new roof, our type of material on that old roof. The only problem is that I'd had the old studio roof redone at a cost of thousands of pounds about six months before. <laughs> so what they wanted to do initially was to rip it all off and do the lot. And I said, OK, well, get on with it then. And off they went. And they came back a day later and they said, no, we don't have to take the old one off. We can do this or we can do that. I thought, well, why tell me? But <laughs> that's just life. This is the sort of problem that you get when you're doing these buildings. And you're no expert on building. This next picture is a shot of the inside. It shows you the roof inside the building. And as we move forward through these images, you can see where they ran the wires through the girders and all the rest. And uh, that's my son having a look at it. And if he doesn't get on with it, you can mark my words, he'll tell them. <laughs> he don't mess around. I argue bargy sometimes, but he doesn't. Yeah, so there's the roof on it. And, uh, well, it, it, it had its... Uh, avenues of problems uh, it was solved eventually and you can actually see on this image here the uh, stuffing that they've put between those walls the inner wall and the outer wall now here's an important little piece uh, by way of an image and if you take a look at it what they've done is they've take this thermal material and crammed it up between the uh, the girders in the roof and apparently that's essential <laughs> if you notice when you look at it as well something that's not immediately obvious to a layman like me is that there is a gap above that uh, thermal material quite important apparently and uh, yeah we'll see why later now once we got to this stage where the boarding's up on the ceiling in the other room you can see a picture on the screen now where they cut the hole out for the studio window to see into the new section. 
and they cut a hole out for a door. More about the door later. That's another story too. Well, you can see very clearly there that they've hacked it out. <laughs> yeah, there's another image of from in the new section in this studio here, looking back towards the door, which is exactly where I'm looking and you're not right now. Now at this point, uh, you're moving forward to Fair Old Drayton. Once they had the, uh, the roof up and the ceiling up internally, they got the plasterers in. Now these plasterers were particularly, uh, particularly good guys. Yeah, they knew what they were doing all right. And I have a few images of the plasterers, as you can see there, working away. Very nice guys, very helpful. And uh, they did a great job. There they are. And there's the finished uh, plastering. Once the plastering had been done, I thought they did a really cool job of it. On this image, you've got the, uh, the front door, or the, the, the door to the outside, open. That white th thing with four little windows, just so we could have a bit of light coming in. Now remember, I've still got all that stuff in the studio. <laughs> some of it's in the house, some of it's at work, some of it's here, some of it's there, and so on and so forth. And here's a couple of shots. You can see a pair of ladders and a pile of junk in there. And that eventually becomes the control room. Uh, have a look at the light on there, that, that light that's in the control room, because later that gets changed along with a lot of others. And there's a story to all that. This is, uh, again, in that control room. And you can see the stuff in the other room is, well, basically demolished. <laughs> it's not something that uh, I like to see at the time. And you can tell builders a thousand times, they have no clue, honestly. Now, as you move forward with this, once the plaster has done his thing, you, you're really ready for the electrician. Now, these, listen, these electrician types, <laughs> call me what you want if you're an electrician, that's okay. But these electrician types, they, they sort of argy-bargy around a bit. And that image there is where we're going to put a, uh, a fuse box. Yeah, you'll see them later, but a fuse box. Now, there's an interesting bit with this fuse box because this fuse box goes on up through the ceiling there and goes along to the old studio where there's another fuse box and that fuse box goes out to the building under the ground into my garage and along to yeah you've guessed it another fuse box oh where's it go from there well it goes from the garage down under the ground a fair bit of a way into the main house and to yeah you've guessed it another fuse box so there's a bit of a trip with this wiring and uh, it can be a bit of a problem. Now this is the point where there was a problem. Yep, sure enough, what was happening was that the trips in the electrics kept tripping off. They were going on a trip. <laughs> and it all came back to the electrician was saying, oh yeah, it's this one that goes underground between your garage and your house, it clearly has got a problem. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that thing underground, it starts here at the edge of the uh, garage and it moves forward under the ground. As you can see, it comes up there from under the ground and then goes off to the left on that image into the house. And he was saying, oh yeah, it, it's obviously it's got water and it, it's something wrong with it. It, it needs ripping up. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how hard that would be if I had to do that. I'd have to rip up part of a sort of £20,000 drive. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? So we persevered a bit further. And it turned out that it wasn't the uh, cabling between the house and the garage. It turned out to be something, well, different. From the garage, the cable then came out of the uh, fuse box, I'll call it that, and went around the garage, down the wall, under the ground in a pipe that we'd fitted all them years ago, back in 1995, so we could get cables through into the actual studio, you know, for the power and the rest of it. And uh, that came out into another fuse box just on that inside wall 
and that cable had actually failed underground. Now it was the regular sort of cable and it was in a tube that went underground but when I took a look at it later I could see that uh, there was water in that tube under the ground it had got in somehow. Well, after all them years I'm not surprised with the water table being what it is. So I ended up changing that cable uh, or fitting the new cable and then getting the electrician to continue from there. And when I did fit the new cable everything was hunky-dory again. Well fancy that but it just shows you that you can get these problems part way through uh, a build and it's not always so easy to fix. Had it been the one in the drive I can tell you now it would have cost a fortune to do that. <laughs> in any case I'm quite capable of running cables as you will see later uh, to solve problems like that. This is a, a picture of again in the old studio main room not the control room with all the gear being walked over and all the rest of it it was a nightmare to get past and uh, I strongly recommend you don't do things like that it's a right nightmare. But just before we do leave this picture if you look at that Behringer speaker that's on the wall you can see that there's some cabling there and uh, actually if you look close enough there's actually a, a fuse box and that's where the cable goes that I had to run in from the garage. Hmm. Now once they got going with the uh, the internal side of things they did move on at a fair rate. Well they did for a while and this is the first shot I took of the control room when it actually started to look a bit more like a control room again. Now they'd actually boarded it up and done done the window and all that stuff and uh, yeah as you can see there it was an improvement. Now moving on to the next photograph this was a photograph I took after because I did the painting in this uh, studio so this wall behind me here is one of my pieces of work <laughs> and uh, you can see you can see it there it, it started to look quite nice and this was at a point where the electrician was still working. You notice on the left hand side of the ceiling there is one lamp and nothing fitted to the right. But I'll come back to the electro electronics uh, for sure. So what you're going to see next is an image uh, of the control room after I'd painted it and uh, done the necessary work uh, because they didn't. Where I'd actually changed the ceiling lamp as well from the old tube types to a lead type and indeed uh, the whole studio ended up with lead lights. Now the, the original didn't really affect me too much unless I'd got or somebody had got a Stratocaster uh, and then it was a little bit more difficult to uh, to record but uh, anyway moving on uh, those were the new lights. Here's another angle and you can see in the right hand corner there that I'd actually fitted a, uh, a rack unit and that's the main uh, conglomeration of cables from the right hand studio which is the old building and from the left hand studio as of that picture uh, of the new building and they all come into that box and when you get to uh, video 3 you'll see more information about that box and what's in it and how it was done. I don't show you that very specific information in video two, but I do cover a lot of other things, so definitely worth taking a look at that is. There's another shot of the control room with that uh, new door area. You can see it. Notice there's no door on it, which is another aspect I'll come back to a bit later. Now here's a, a photograph going to come up of the this room here, uh, the, the, the new extension. Uh, with it painted and uh, with the original lights on and things like that. Now if you look at it you can see down at the far end uh, next to that studio control room window is a door that's been fitted. That door was going to take, <laughs> believe it or not, three weeks to get. And it, cutting a long story short, uh, I said okay, no problem. I'm not paying you a bean until you sort it out. I can't get the door. Well, that was the story. But later, well, about two days later, <laughs> the builders turned up with a door. Fancy that. And they proceeded to fit it. Uh, 
so that he ended up with a door that wasn't actually the right door to save them two or three weeks of waiting. Well, that's all well and good, but it's a right pain in the behind if you are the person waiting to do the studio with all your equipment going damp and wet in the garage, in the house, in the other part of the studio and all the rest of it. I don't want to harp on too much about the uh, about that door. I'm looking at it now. Actually, it's just right right across from me. I'm looking at it now and it's it's clearly not the right door. But it works, I suppose. There's an image of it. And here's another image of it. And you can see it, it sort of seems to be sort of smaller than what the actual hole is. And that's about right. So, in my words, they are my words, it was a bodge. What co could you say about that? I don't know. I gave up at that point. Well, at this point, uh, the electrics had been done. The painting had been done. The ceilings had been done. And you can see that light that's in there has been done with the newer type of lead. But in the new extension, the electrician had fitted two tubes that wouldn't light up anything. They were useless. So I screwed them back off. Literally threw them in the bin. Well, I didn't throw them in the bin. I gave them a friend. And I put in some uh, really decent lights. You can see how light it is in here now. And these are lead lights and they're, they're really quite powerful. Uh, which is what he should have done in the first place. He knew it was going to be used for photography, for video, for this, for that, for the other. And you want plenty of light around. And I ended up changing them out myself because they couldn't be asked. Right, that's the lights done. Let's move on to one more picture. Oh, just jog your mind. When the builder had finished, it was still like a tip. And yeah, yeah, let me come back up. <laughs> so that's what I was left with when they went. Uh, yeah. And then we had another problem. Now I've got no images for this little section and we're nearly at the end of the video, I have to say. But what happens once the electrics are all done, once everything's done, that guy from the council keeps coming back and checking out the building. And he decided that there wasn't enough cross airflow. Do you remember above that uh, material they put in the ceiling, there was a gap. And you have to have an airflow over that, apparently. Uh, so they ended up modifying the ceiling from the outside to allow airflow. And then he was quite happy, except for one thing. He then said, where's the certificate for the electrics? So I went back to the builder and the builder got his electrician and a dog to come out. And they purportedly created the report, did the proper tests used a thing called a mega that tests with 500 volts or more, 1,000 volts, I think, uh, all the wiring to make sure it's of the standard it should be. So the builder eventually gave me the certificate, which I sent to the council, and the council laughed his socks off, said, what's that? Now, here, listen, I know I look an idiot, <laughs> but I've had a lot of experience with certifications for... Uh, wiring in buildings right just trust me i have and the certificate that he gave me to send to the council i knew was a joke it was a total joke but i wanted the council to well to reject it rather than me and that's exactly what the council did he laughed at me and he said no you need a proper certificate so i went back to the builder remember him and the builder said ah oh, yeah 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 oh i'll get somebody so five days later, bearing in mind you can't use the building until it's all been certified and signed off by the council. The council weren't signing anything. He came back to me and he said, I can't find anybody to do this certification. What are you going to do? I said, what do you mean, what am I going to do? Fortunately, I have a relative that is actually a qualified guy in building electrics. Yeah. So I said to this uh, builder, I said, well, I, I can get somebody to do it. He said, I aren't paying any more than 200 quid. Mm, you know, as they do. <laughs> so I paid my relative 200 pound of the builder's money. And my relative came along very kindly 
very kindly, Wayne. I appreciate it. And he uh, did the certification properly. He won't do it any other way. We sent it to the council. The council signed everything off. And that's the end of the build section, really. And I'm telling you now, listen, <laughs> unless you are absolutely serious about building a studio or anything else outside your house, don't do it. <laughs> oh, you want to extend it? Don't do it. Just stick as you are and struggle. I have to say, though, that it's all good now. It looks pretty cool, actually. Well, you're going to see it in section three. Section two, you'll see a lot more, but section three is really the one with all the, the nitty gritty. That's how we ended up. That's how it is. It works. It's good. It's this. It's that. It's everything it should have been. And there's only one more thing that we need to talk about. Now, I know, I know. It's been a reasonably long video. I don't know how long because I just record it. But there's something you've got to consider if you're considering building outside. If you're in, let me put it in a nicer way. If you're going to use any type of builder, beware. <laughs> beware. What it costs you for your building will change. And it changes at the drop of a hat. Right, well, I budgeted for a certain amount of money. And the original quotation was around £27,000. That's a lot of money. That's about... I don't know what it is in American, but you can easily work that out. But where did it end up at £27,000? No, it ended up at about £31,000. <laughs> I aren't even going to try and explain why or what or the rest, except to say this. Look, when you quote for something at £27,000, that's the price it should be. I'm not interested in all this crap that goes on. Yeah, that to this or that. It's like a, somebody crying on your shoulder. Not interesting. Not really. But, you know, I'm not too hard a guy. So ultimately I did actually pay the 31000 whatever it was. Look, I'm, 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 I'm almost crying here. <laughs> not. Yeah, so budget for that. Don't expect that... Your studio is going to cost you pence because I'm telling you now it ends up in tens and tens and tens of thousands of pounds. And if I'd had to dig that drive up like I was talking, that would have been at least another probably five grand on the top. Oh, yeah, that would have been trouble. That's it for now on this first video, the, the physical building of the studio extension and all the aggro that went with it. You can trust me, there's far more aggro than what I showed you. Far, far more. The video will go on forever else. Uh, but that's, that's my experience with getting it built in 2021, 2022. And I, mark my words, uh, would I do it again? Well, maybe, maybe, but it's a lot of aggravation to go through. Watch for video two that covers the building of the studio desk and moving all the stuff around and all the, the rest of it and some cabling and all sorts of things. And then video three in the series gets you completely up to date today as the studio is and as it's working. Yeah, I'm sure you enjoy that. That's it for now. Get out of here. I don't want to see any more of you until video two. Boom!